Hmm. But I'll wake up in the morning and like not want to get out of bed. And it's like I go through this whole thing. And then later in the day, I kind of like like wake up and I'm like excited about life and Yay. doing all this stuff and running around. And then I'm yes. Many inspired. And that. then I'm guessing some version of that will happen again tomorrow. So hmm. I wonder if you have any thoughts about that. Yes, I've experienced the exact same thing. Not so much anymore, but I used to. And I see many people experience it, whether or not they are aware of that. In other words, who here, just raise your hand just as a sort of mini survey, who here experiences that late afternoon, evening, night, they're more clear, they're more awake, they're more aligned than when they wake up? Anyone? Have you noticed? Not always, not every day, but a lot of the days. You wake up and it's like you have to get your clarity engine starting again. Have you noticed? Many teachers in the past have recommended don't sleep too long, actually. For this is one of those reasons. Many meditation retreats don't allow you to sleep for too long, precisely also because of this reason. Because literally, physically, on the physical level of your identity, on the physical level of your expression of your consciousness, when you wake up after eight or nine hours of straight immobilization, you literally do have to get started again. Like as part of this illusory paradigm that we've created, there is some sloth, there is some slowness, there is some inertia going on with that. And so also that is to teach us the lessons of balance and the lessons of clarity and precision and alignment. It's all a physical representation. It's an excuse, it's a permission slip for us to play with the physical in such a way that it teaches us balance, that without those limitations we could not teach ourselves. So first of all, my first recommendation, sleeping less is definitely not my first recommendation, but it is in there along the lines of things you could experiment with. My first recommendation is to really, really find your joy. Not so much even find, because that can be deceiving. Whenever I say like find your joy, or find out what you're here to do, or find out what your bliss is, or your purpose, people tend to trip up a little bit over that idea. They tend to seek for it. So actually more a more effective and immediate way to be in your inspiration is, well, A, if you can, to simply choose to be in your inspiration, but to act on your inspiration. Meaning that when it does occur, when you do have a moment of inspiration, don't doubt it, don't hesitate, with integrity and truthfulness, go for it, fearlessly. And when you start acting on your inspiration like that, you start discovering what it is. But before you start acting on it, you can't really discover what it is, because you have no access to it. You're just groping in the dark. Does that make sense? So act on your inspirations. Are you doing that? I feel like I did today. Okay, nice. nice. I mean, I feel like I, I do, but there's like these moments of like losing touch with that. Okay, and that's, then, that's all right. Yeah. Do you do it to the best of your ability, would you say? Have you made it a priority in your life? To actually wake up asking yourself what is inspiring to me right now? Or do you wake up asking yourself any other question? Um... Lately, it's like I've gotten away from that, but in the past, there's been times where I felt that. Nice. We'll go back to that, maybe. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that if you're truly in your excitement and in your inspiration, you will start to feel that you can't wait to wake up, right? When you go to bed, you're like, okay, let me slow down my heartbeat for a second, because I need to sleep, right? So you fall asleep, but you wake up because you're still excited. I mean, when you wake up, you're still excited, and so you're happy to start your day. You're actually inspired to start your day. Your engines are already going. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, from... I, want, I want that. Uh huh. Maybe that's part of why I came up here to like say that. Nice. I want for, that. How long do you sleep? It's, it's usually uh, like seven and a half or eight hours. Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, do you experience grogginess when you wake up? Or do you experience clarity of body? Well, it's like, it's more like, it's more like I wake up and I like lie in bed and there's a part of me that just wants to like lie in bed all day. Okay, like that's so interesting. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Who resonates with that? At least who has experienced that? Not resonate with it, like that's what I want to do. <laughs> but like who, who experiences that? Right? Sometimes you wake up and you're like, I could sleep all winter and not wake up until it's summer, right? Yeah, some, some feeling like that. Yeah, and it's a representation, it's a representation for how long or how, how, to what extent during that day or during that period in your life you've been in your resistance rather than in your joy and in your flow and in your effortlessness. Does that make sense? Yeah. The more you are in your resistance to what's true for you, in other words, the more you're accumulating around yourself things that don't belong to you, things that are seeming obligations, but not really, they're self-created illusions that you feel responsible for, things that deny or oppose seemingly your flow, your bliss, these things that you continue to choose 
to believe in, to act on, to feel limited by, the more of that is present during a day, the more exhausted you'll be at the end of the day, and the more you'll feel like you don't ever want to wake up again. Because it doesn't actually tend to go away that much when you sleep. On a certain level it does because you reconnect to spirit when you're dreaming. You reconnect to spirit level where there is no resistance, where there is no limitation. And so you, in a sense, it's like refueling. Does that make sense? It's like putting fuel in your car. Yeah. So you stop your vehicle, your physical vehicle, to get some fuel, to get some REM sleep, to get some dream state, to get some inspiration, to reconnect to your true self on that level. And then you have more of a capacity to deal with what you left off with when you wake up. But when you wake up, usually, you still are left with what you created the day before, whether energetically or physically or circumstantially or financially or socially. But your capacity to handle it usually is a little higher, unless the layer of negative definitions and resistance is so thick that when you wake up, that's the first thing you experience. And it's like, oh no. And that way, like the way your mind interprets that is that I could sleep forever. In other words, I could just dismiss this whole reality which is filled with resistance and go back to spirit. Yeah, it's some, some feel, I resonate with what you said about obligations and yeah, the resistance. And, exactly. So look at that. When you look at that and you see that they're not true, and you apply what I call enlightenment by elimination, and you just start dropping everything that doesn't feel good radically. If that person doesn't feel good, drop it. Say, I love you, bye-bye. If this task that you have been doing doesn't resonate, say, I love you, thank you, bye-bye. Just throw everything in a trash bin that doesn't feel good and light, with respect and integrity, but also not too much. Meaning that when I say too much, I mean, there is not really such a thing as too much integrity, but there is such a thing as misplaced integrity, which is simply responsibility disguised as being, you know, responsibility is being afraid. When you don't want to let go of your responsibilities, it's simply you're afraid to let go of them because you don't think what's going to happen. And then you might be tempted to call your responsibilities integrity, but they're not the same thing. If you keep surrounding your life with responsibilities that don't belong to your true joy, you're not being in integrity with yourself which is your only means to express existence. So better do something about it. Start seeing responsibilities as different from integrity and start making your integrity super flexible, super malleable, super dynamic, honoring of the other person's expectations to an extent, but clearly stating who you are. First of all, being clear on who you are in such a circumstance, what you stand for, what excites you, and then communicating that to your existing seeming agreements as best as you can. And always knowing that since there is only infinite parallel realities, there's never a blockage possible. Unless it's relevant for you to learn something out of that limited experience. But usually speaking, you can always ask for greater creativity in a circumstance, in a dynamic, in an agreement, to get out of the agreement or to transform the agreement in a way that's still in integrity with the being that seems to be at the other end of that agreement, yet allows you to do exactly what you want to do. There's always a way unless you really really have to stop and learn from that limitation but usually there's always a way well technically mechanically speaking there's always a way around it but sometimes higher self chooses that no this is actually what you want to experience and learn from but always try to see if you can get past it by a learning lesson and by b knowing that you can knowing that there is a way to creatively renegotiate all your agreements in your life, whether they are verbal agreements with people or energetic agreements with your own mind or belief system, change them so that they actually accompany and support you living your joy and inspiring and waking up feeling light every day. Drop whatever doesn't feel good. Can you do that? Yes. I'll guarantee you, you'll wake up much more like you did as a kid. Not, hmm. not waiting to, you couldn't wait to get out of your bed. Yeah. He didn't want to go to sleep. Well, I never wanted to go to sleep. Yeah. I still, still don't. <laughs> still hate it. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's helpful. Thank you.